Hi. Uh, yes, I'm standing in the street. That is the street that you see. I just wanted to show you a couple of things here. Okay, as I am going on the street. All right. So, there's LG. He's going to drive me today. There's my house in the back with my car and my boat. And if you look as I go down the hill, that blue you see at the very end is my lake. And we're going to go for a ride, and I'm going to show you just how close the dock is, why LG and Aaron like it so much, especially all night long. So, here we go. Okay, so we're in the car, and I'm facing down the hill, and here we go, Tom. Literally, I am not kidding you, you could roll my boat down this hill and it would end up in the lake. And there's the dock. And right next to it is the boat ramp so that I can put my boat in the water. And I know you are all very, very familiar with this scene right here. But that's literally how long it takes to get from my house to the dock and why these guys like to fish it so much. Need to use the bathroom? Drive up to the house. Need something to eat? drive up to the house. Weather gets crappy, drive up to the house. Literally, you could run it in about two minutes. I don't run anywhere. I take the car. But I just wanted to give you a shot of that. My name is Boat Barn. And just all along, kind of what we're, what we're looking at. So, I just wanted to give you a little look at what that looks like and why they like this spot so much. So, see you later. So, we're back at the house. We have a big weekend coming up. We have another one of the famous bets going on where Catfish Regulator Aaron and Pontoon Jody are going to be here fishing off the dock Friday night, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Biggest fish wins, then the loser gets a Pull a dive off the end of the dock. And since it's Halloween weekend, I had to stick my two cents in it. And they'll both be wearing costumes. So, you may not want to miss this. Set your alarm at least for 7 a.m. so that you can see the end of this. Last weekend, pretty quiet. Nobody was here. Thank God. The week before, though, was another Pontoon Judy bet that they lost. If you want to see that, you head over to the One Ton channel. But I strongly warn you, it's four minutes of your life you will never get back. And you may want to bleach your eyeballs when you're done watching it. So, <clears throat> I'm going to make granola bars. I make these just about every weekend. It's something they can just take down there. I cut them up, little snack things. Aaron calls them the ooey gooey bars. They are pretty basic. They have peanut butter, nuts, oats, done, honey, you know. Um, you just stick them in the fridge, and when they harden up, they're done. I usually do them early so that they, you know, get to set, because they do have butter in them, and you got to let that, you melt the butter, and then you have to let that harden up again. So, the first thing that I did was I toasted the pecans and the walnuts that I used to make this. So, just put a little toast on them, just to bring out those oils and get those flavors going. Yeah. Making a mess over here. I need my knife.
All right, so the walnuts, I bought them. They were already chopped. And I just put a rough chop on, chop on the pecans. Yes, pecans, not pecans. You can put the nuts in a 350 degree oven. I usually do this amount for about five minutes. Um, I've read where it says, if you smell them, they're done. No, if you smell them, you burned them. So five minutes just to bring out just a little bit of flavor and a little bit of color. Not a whole lot, obviously, if you want them darker roasted, you leave them in there a little bit longer, but you need to watch them very carefully. Once they burn, they get bitter and you have to start all over again. So that's all, just a little rough chop on the pecans. In my pot, I have to put honey, butter, and peanut butter. The original recipe calls for coconut oil because it's a whole lot more stable. After it hardens, it doesn't melt like butter does. But since they're only down the street, I use butter because I have it and I don't have any coconut oil. Okay. Five and a third tablespoons of butter, I know, but there's markings on the label, so just use it. Okay. And I need a third of a cup of peanut butter and a quarter of a cup of honey. So... When you're using sticky things like peanut butter and honey, grab your old cooking spray, hit your measuring cups with them. That, that way it all slides out when you go to pour it out. So, here we go. Done. Peanut butter pain in the butt. And I will put the link to the original recipe that I use this, get this from. I've made a few variations on this particular one, although the original recipe has seven different variations to make all kinds of different flavorings. But Tom is a peanut butter addict, and so I do this for him. And obviously you can use any kind of nuts you like, any kind of nut butters that you like, if you prefer an almond as opposed to peanut. Okay, so this goes on the stove, medium high, till every, you know, stir it occasionally while everything melts. And then you're going to boil it for one minute and then take it off the heat. And after that, you let it sit for 15 minutes to cool and then we'll be back. Okay, so we've let this cool for 15 minutes, and it's just because it, you know, you boiled it and it's so very hot. So you just got to let it cool for a couple of minutes. I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla, a pinch of salt, because everything sweet needs a little salt. Just stir that all in there until it's all mixed up. Now put the nuts in. Make sure they get well coated.
And then I have three cups of oats, quick oats, not the old fashioned, the quick oats. And you just stop mixing until it's all combined. It gets stiff, it's sticky, it gets hard to stir, but I usually make a big mess and I'm trying not to. I usually have this stuff flying all over the kitchen because I have no patience and I just want it to mix in and be quick. Okay, I have a half a cup of chocolate chips and a half a cup of butterscotch because that is also one of Tom's favorites. And I usually use what I have in the cabinet. I have white chocolate chips up there that I've used and I have uh, sea salt and caramel milk chocolate covered morsels that I've put in here before and Heath Bar pieces, you know, it's just whatever, whatever they feel like, whatever I feel like. And I put the chocolate in last because this mixture is still pretty hot and you don't want it to melt. All right, so that's all mixed up. All mixed up. Okay. I have a nine by nine baking pan here and I lined it with parchment, and believe me, you will be very glad you did this. Line it with parchment before you put this in. Just pour it in there. And the reason I use such a big pan to cook that little bit of peanut butter and honey is because I'm lazy and I don't want to use another bowl. So when it comes off the heat, I just mix it all in the pan. Yeah. So you just take your spatula and start pressing. You get it all into the edges, all into the corners. You want to pack this in really, really tight. takes a couple of minutes make sure you get it all in there because once this hardens up when you go to cut it the last thing you want is for it to crumble so as long as you pack it pretty solid that will not happen and this has to stay in the refrigerator for a minimum of four hours but I usually just leave it overnight um, or if I make it in the morning, <clears throat> it's ready for them about two o'clock when they're hungry and looking for something to eat. And I use a silicone spatula to do this because it doesn't stick to it. But if you use a, any other kind, you just hit it with your spray and you know, every time it gets sticky, just clean it off, hit it with the spray and Just keep on going. But I have silicone ones and they seem to work the best. All right. So. Yeah, I hate this. There we go. It's gonna go in the refrigerator. It's gonna sit there. And when it's hardens, we'll come back and I'll show you how it comes out and we'll cut it up. And we're back. It's about six hours later since I put this in the refrigerator. It looks pretty much the same, only it's hard. This is where the parchment is gonna save you. Ta-da! Pull the whole thing out. One hunk, pull the parchment down. And then I just cut it up. Really sharp knife. Okay. 
and there it is. Yui Gooey Bar. Chocolate, butterscotch, honey, oats. It's good for you. Tom shouldn't be eating a lot of sugar. I know it has honey in it, but this is better for him than any donut that he can get. So, and I just cut them all up. And actually, because they're still on the parchment, I can usually pop this right back in the pan and they can see, he can just throw the whole pan in the car <clears throat> and take it down there with him. So, And of course, because I need to turn it, this is when my cutting board decides that it's going to demonstrate its non-slip properties and not turn for me. And right back in the pan. And there we go. All cut, ready to go. He comes and gets them. Drive them out of the dock. He brings me back an empty pan. It also keeps my pan clean, too. Because I hate doing dishes. I despise doing dishes. And all of my, <clears throat> excuse me, cookware and bakeware and utensils and knives, none of it can go in the dishwasher. So anywhere that I don't have to wash anything, I'm good. But the official snack of the dock, the ooey gooey bar. See ya.